Hello, everybody. It's actually uh, Sunday morning. I'm, yes, I'm recording on the Sunday. So this is another episode of Girl on Fire. And with me, I have, I guess you could call her uh, the queen of the slow burn. <laughs> everybody knows. Okay, so with me, I have Jay. Say hello. Hi, everyone. Okay, so we're going to do some hot sauce. She she chose, we chose a fruity one for her. I didn't want to, you know, damage the goods or anything. So, so uh, you know, I decided to do something mild. So we are tasting the same hot sauce. It is, oh, hold on, a pineapple habanero by Bravado Spice. Now they have pretty good hot sauces. So I'm actually, we were just talking off camera and I'm actually looking forward to this one. It has pineapple, ooh, white wine vinegar. That's different altogether because usually they use apple cider or this, you know, white distilled vinegar, um, yellow bell pepper, habanero, garlic, and sea salt. So the habanero is way down there. So I'm thinking this probably won't be spicy at all. Not for me anyway. Yeah. So <clears throat> we're going to give this a taste and we're going to rate it. Hmm. It smells interesting. It smells like pineapple and garlicky. It smells also vinegary. A little bit. But white wine vinegar doesn't have as strong as a presence as some of the other vinegars do. You can smell it a little bit. Okay, this is a really thin sauce, everybody. But it smells nice. So you see, I got a little bit on my spoon. I got more than I usually do because I'm thinking this won't be hot at all. Yeah, so, I think so too. We're gonna give it a nice college try here. That is good. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It does have more of a kick than I thought it was going to, but it's really tasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has this mix of this exotic sweetness, but also yeah. the spiciness. It's I really like good. this. This will be good, like on uh, maybe um, pork. I don't eat meat anymore, but I know. I mean, either. It would, yeah, it would be good on pork, I think. Um, maybe some Thai food. It depends on what you're eating. Or cheese. Yes. Yes. Everything oh, is good with cheese. Right? That would be good, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're eating, like, um, if you like curries and you're eating, like, a sweeter curry, this will go good with that if you just mm -hmm. want to add a, a, a like a another layer of a flavor profile. But this is really good. I'm, you know, everybody, there's some sauces I don't use, and there's actually sauces I throw away because they're just awful. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going to use this one. I, I, actually, I'm going to give this, I would say, uh, a 10 for taste. This is one of the best tasting sauces I've had. It got just a little bit of heat afterwards, so I would even maybe give it a five for the heat because it's not, yeah, it's probably pr produces the same sting as your regular hot sauce would. So it, it's it's really good. I, I like that. Like I said, I'm, go I'm going to use this on my lunch today. Mm -hmm. Let me see if it is it's refrigerated. Officially they rated it three out of five peppers. And I say yes. that's yes. right? Yes. Yeah. I have their Reaper sauce as well. I tried their Reaper sauce. It was okay. It, it it was pretty tasty and it was spicy, but it, meh, it's not, it was not as good as I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. But what, what do you think? What would you give it? Um, Spice-wise, I would say their rating is accurate, like three out of five peppers. Okay. Um, Taste-wise, I would also rate it pretty high. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's uh, really good. Like maybe a eight or a nine out of 10. Okay, okay. Yeah. So. Now that you brought it up, are you a vegan or are you vegetarian? Um, I'm vegetarian-ish. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, like pretty much everyone I know who is a vegetarian is a vegetarian because they made the decision not mm -hmm. to eat meat anymore mm -hmm. um, because it's um, cruel to animals um, mm -hmm. and not good for the environment, um, mm -hmm. which I agree with. Um, mm -hmm. I might be a vegetarian anyway, but um, I don't like meat. I don't like the taste. Really? I never liked it. Even as a, as a teenager, as a child, I never liked it. My That's body doesn't like it. Like I, I have a feeling that my body can't process it very well. Um, oh, okay. And so I, I, it was a natural progression to, to me um, not to eat meat. If 
if I have a, I'm visiting with friends and they're cooking meat and I might eat the, the, the sauce. Mm -hmm. I don't mind if my food touches meat, but mm -hmm. I, I don't like the taste. I've Sometimes I try a little bit and then I'm like, oh no, I still can't eat it. It's really? That, that's interesting because you know, uh, we're going off the cuff here, everybody, but you know, we weren't supposed to be talking about this, but anyway, it seems interesting. Um, there's actually an enzyme that we possess that helps us, you know, with meat products. Um, and that's why it's like when people are lifelong vegetarians or haven't eaten meat in years or so, it's, it, um, it will make them very sick to mm -hmm. just try, look, oh, I'm going to have a burger. I have a, you know, if you haven't eaten meat for two years and you're just eating a burger, you're going to get sick, you know? So maybe you just don't have that enzyme, you know, you yeah. never know. Yeah. In my family, a lot of people have joint issues. Mm -hmm. um, and like if my younger sister, she eats a steak and she regrets it for the next five days, oh no. joints, everything starts acting up and Wow. It's my body's way of protecting it me. It could I'm be. I mean, it could be. Yeah. I was a huge meat eater. Um, you know, um, chicken. Uh, I would, I love a good steak. I love the good steak. In fact, like for my birthday, um, uh, was it last year? My God, it seems like 20 years has passed. Uh, my birthday last year, my wife, uh, got me like, uh, this, this big package of different types of steaks. Mm -hmm. And I was so happy. I was just like, oh my God. So I'm going to do, I'm going to have this one with this. I'm going to have, you know, mushrooms and onions. For so it was like, I was so happy. But, um, but it's like, as by the end of the year, and my birthday is December 18th. You know what? It was the year before. It wasn't last year. It was the year before. But so by the end of last year, um, you know, I was like, okay, I want to be healthier, you know, and I know plant-based diet is, you know, probably the way to go. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm going to try it, you know, and see. I was like, maybe I'll just, you know, do uh, plant-based, you know, five out of seven days, you know, or six out of seven days. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to give it a try. And I did a, uh, a one of those prepared food delivery things mm -hmm. because I like to cook but I hate to cook at the same time because it's just, I don't have the time a lot. But mm -hmm. uh, but now that everybody's sequestered, I mean, you know, you have all the time in the world. But, um, but yeah, I, I tried it out and I was like, okay. And I didn't miss it. I, I do eat shrimp. I do eat shrimp, um, mm -hmm. oysters, things like, I do eat seafood, but I don't eat uh, red meat at all. And I only, I only eat like, and I would eat fish, but I'm allergic to fish. Oh. So, but I can't eat seafood. I, I stick with uh, shrimp and oysters. I'll do uh, maybe a little crawfish because it is Louisiana. And that's yeah. a big thing here. But uh, it's it's going pretty good. I don't I don't miss it at all. In fact, I'll see a commercial with really like a Burger King burger. Whereas before, I'm like, oh my God, I have to try that. And now I'm just kind of like, mm, you know. So yeah. so yeah, so it's, it's been pretty easy. I thought it was going to be harder, but I digress. I digress. <laughs> Let's talk about writing, which is what you're here for. Okay. So you have a book, uh, this recent, um, what is, what is the name of it? Wrong number, right woman. Okay. Explain the premise to me. I haven't gotten around to reading it yet. It's on my list of things to read. So explain the premise to me. Um, it's about Denny, who's a shy butch, mm -hmm. and um, she's like your very relatable everyday character that we all could be her a little bit. Um, she's a cashier, so no glamorous job. Oh, okay. And she, she lives with her sister and helps mm -hmm. her raise her niece, and she is introverted and shy and not good at talking to women. So she's been single for a while. And she's and butch? Yeah, yeah. Really? That's interesting. I mean, you don't see I, that a lot. Oh, I, I have a, a lot of friends and acquaintances who are like that, you know. In um, books, you don't see that a lot. In yeah, real in books, life, exactly. yes, but not um, in books, you don't see that a lot. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to go against all the stereotypes mm -hmm. um, that you see in books because, I mean, most readers, most writers are more the introverted type. Mm -hmm. I, myself, am pretty shy. I'm not butch, but I'm pretty shy, so I could really relate to that part of her personality mm -hmm. um 
Yeah, and so um, one day she gets an accidental text message from Eliza, who is pretty much her complete opposite. Um, mm -hmm. She's more outgoing, she's really funny, uh, and she always assumed herself to be straight. Oh. So, um, and she takes, she has also not very, very, uh, been very lucky with dating. So her best friend talks her into trying um, online dating. Mm -hmm. And she takes a photo of herself in her dating outfit and sends it to who she assumes is her best friend, but she gets the number wrong. So the message ends up with Danny. And yeah, well, they start talking and they, there's an instant connection between them. And when they meet for the first time, that instant connection is still very much there. Um, Ooh. Yeah, and, and the, the conflict is that Eliza assumed herself to be straight, mm -hmm. but it's not like this drawn out agonizing about, oh my God, I'm attracted to a woman, oh no. Um, like, oh no, I'm not the person I thought I was, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it's not like that. Um, I wanted to write a novel where there's very little angst. I felt like, okay, this year we all have enough angst in our lives. Yes, yes, yes. We need a novel that is like, all about positive feelings mm -hmm. about learning to love yourself and love your life and um there's a lot of body positivity in there as well um okay because danny is more of a, a chubby person she mm -hmm. has love handles and she feels a little bit self-conscious about it mm -hmm. um and eliza uh, as she phrases it is uh, not exactly blessed in the chest department <laughs> So, you know, I, I wanted to write about people who are like, you know, could be everyone, you know. Yes, um, I, I love that. I love that. And I do wish, um, you know, and I know uh, romance is about escapism and, you know, is it, it almost has to be other i mean you know we when we read you know we expect these characters to be model like to be in to have like five different careers you know mm -hmm. but she's a ceo but she's a mountain climber and you know and then she races bikes on the weekend you know and all this stuff you know yeah. we've gotten used to that yeah and a lot and there's nothing wrong with it i mean i'm reading that stuff too there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with it. I, I like reading it too but i it seems like maybe it's just the year or maybe the past couple of years, it seems like um, a lot more uh, books are coming out where the characters are more down to earth, everyday type people. Yeah. And I like I like that that's happening. I really like that that's happening because that's mm -hmm. I've always written that way. I mean, you know, so so I really like that that's, that that's happening. And I'm glad yeah. you kind of uh, dipped into the foray. And that sounds yeah. like a book I really... I think I just moved your book up on the list a little bit. Is it coming out in audiobook? Yeah, it should be out like any day. We have it uploaded to Audible like three months ago. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, have, really soon then. Okay. Yeah, they have okay. huge delays this year um, because well, duh. Quality, yeah, they blame it on COVID, but I'm uh -huh. not sure it's just that. Um, and then we recently got an email that said it, they approved it now. So it, it could be up as we speak. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, we who's reading it? Um, Angela Daw. So oh, okay, definitely. Okay, yeah, that'll definitely yeah. be on my wish list. Okay, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, I yeah. might have to check out to, uh, to see. They may have a. Sometimes they'll put a, a you know coming soon and mm -hmm. stuff on there. So I'll check it out. But definitely, that's exciting. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. you are also as we were talking off camera. You are very much an organized planner when it comes to writing. I kudos to you. I admire that. How do you do that without it seeming like so much work before the actual work? How do you do that? I think it's all like how my brain works. I think the important thing as a writer is like finding out what works for you, you know? You hear so much about, oh, you have to plot or no, you have to mm -hmm. just let your creative flow work and i think everyone has to do what's best for them and what works for them and how their brain works and mm -hmm. um i'm very much like an analytical person and a cognitive person and mm -hmm. i enjoy um the planning process the research process learning new things um that's part of why i write about characters who are not exactly like me mm -hmm. i can relate to them their personality or parts of it but um I don't write about myself. I write about 
people who can help me learn about aspects I don't know already mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or the setting that I don't know already. Um, and I enjoy creating the characters before I start writing. Like I have profiles that I've developed for each of them. I know their complete childhood, their families, their relationships. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I, 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 I sometimes I have a feeling like if I'm reading a book, um, and I have this feeling, oh, this person started existing on page one, and they don't really feel like a, a well-developed three-dimensional person, and then it start, then it, the whole book is not as enjoyable to me. I want mm -hmm. to feel like this is an actual person mm -hmm. who have friends, and they are. They're developing within the book, and I can feel that the author knows a lot more about this character than she put on the page, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. she knows how this person would react in any given situation. Um, and if I know this about my characters, then I won't sit in front of a blank page wondering, okay, what do mm -hmm. I write next? Um, mm -hmm. okay. So yeah. the, the character development is really like my favorite thing about writing. Mine too. Yeah, this, mm -hmm. that's the... is. Your first thing is, is your first thing the characters? That that's the first thing you do? Yeah. Because really? mm -hmm. I do too. That's the only thing I write down, actually. I have a little whiteboard in my office. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll put the title of the book. Sometimes I don't have the title of the book. I yeah. mean, sometimes I get it later. I mean, you know, but if I have the title, I'll put the title of the book. And I'll, you know, write down characterizations of the main characters and the side characters as well, because I like your side characters too, because, you know, uh, some books, they just kind of, eh, you know, you'll have the funny one or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. You you develop your side characters too. And because sometimes you use them in the next book. So, you know, but I like the way you do that. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, it's important to start, you know, with those characters because they're kind of, to me, I don't want to say the plot is the potatoes, but the characters are very much the meat of the yeah. whole thing. To me, to me, the characters are the plot, you know, especially in the romance. If you have a different set of characters, it's not the same book. Mm -hmm. um, the characters drive all the decisions, um, yes. every reaction, every action. And so if I get that question, what do you start with the character or the plot? Then I'm like, that's not a question. The characters are the plot. <laughs> there, is, there is no distinction if you're writing romans. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I start with a core idea, you know, like an accidental text message gets a shy character in touch with someone who's the complete opposite. Okay, that's the mm -hmm. core idea. but the core idea is all about the characters. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Have you ever thought about writing something other than romance? Not really. Um, really? Hmm. I, 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 most of what I read is romance. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, I, I read other books too, but like 90% I would say is um, women loving women romance. Okay. Um, I feel like that gives me so much to play with. You know, I, I have written historical romans, paranormal romans, romantic suspense. Um, yeah, you've Jack written pretty Rose much every romance. genre there, yeah. It's such yeah. a wide playing field. And I feel like, I mean, meeting someone new, getting to know them, falling in love, that that gives me so much potential to, to go into the personality. I mean, I'm a mm -hmm. psychologist and I'm interested in what makes people think. Wait a minute, what? You're a what yeah. now? I, I used to be. I mean, if I did can, not know that, and I've known you for years. I didn't know that. Yeah, I yeah. worked as a psychologist for I think eight years. Wow. Well, okay. And and then I gave it up to be a full time writer. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. This this is very interesting. Did you work with uh, adults or kids or everybody? Uh, with adults, mainly with um people who either abused alcohol or drugs or got into trouble with traffic laws. Um, oh, in okay. Germany, we have a very special part of our law that says if you use, lose your driver's license because of either, either alcohol or drugs or like repeated traffic infractions, mm -hmm. you don't just get back your driver's license. You have to um, pass certain psychological oh, evaluations. Okay. And so um, I work with these people to change their lives and to to understand 
why are they in the situation or why do, do they um, abuse alcohol um, mm -hmm. or drugs or get in trouble with the law repeatedly? Oh, well, I did. I, see, I learned something new today. I did not know that about you at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, everybody, um, way back, my God, when was it? 2008, 2009, L Book. Mm -hmm. You were actually my first editor, my first ever editor yeah. on um my god what was the name of that book forever mine mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know uh and I, and I remember that and i remember um i was starting on another book when you know um what was her name Ro roxanne was that her name roxanne? Mm -hmm. yeah and when she got sick and everything so yeah. so that and that was that was a tragedy in itself mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. So everybody, yeah, she was my very first editor. You you didn't exactly, and I've worked with various uh, people, as you know, throughout the years. Um, I have to say, you are a lot more gentle than some of my other editors. But I mean, you know, you were straightforward and, you know, uh, as opposed to somebody like uh, Joe Bell, who, you know, kind of like, what the hell is this? You need to fix it. I mean, you know, all that little stuff in the margins, you know, stuff like that. You, you were, you were, you know, vastly different. In fact, I mean, I wonder, I don't even know how I would take an editor like you now, since I've had Joe for just about every, every other, when I was with Ilva, like, I think she did every book. It, Lee did um, my last book. Mm -hmm. I think, but uh, but yeah, I don't know how I would respond to an editor, you know, that's more of, let me guide you over this way, you know, like, what are you really trying to say? You're trying to say I suck, I mean, you know. Oh, I adjust my style depending on at what stage is the author, mm -hmm. author you know, like if you have a, a newbie author, you you can't just no. keep them in a yeah. better way because um, a lot of authors, struggle with imposter syndrome and not feeling good enough and um, feeling insecure about their writing. Um, I'm more of a diplomatic person. Mm -hmm. um, I get that about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, it can also be like Germans are usually, you know, like they are not brutal or anything, but they are straightforward. And, <laughs> and, and to us, this is like very matter of fact when we're like we don't sugarcoat things as much, mm -hmm. you know, that Americans learn this sandwich technique of giving feedback. Mm -hmm. Like first you are supposed to to say, okay, something positive, then comes the actual critique, and then again you, yes. you close with something positive. We Germans don't think like that. Why <laughs> would I have to, like no, I just say what I think. Yeah, um, too many words. Let, let's go with an economy yeah, of words. It's not, it's not effective that way. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I agree. Yeah, the, the whole sandwich yeah. technique. I mean, that's how I've been taught. I mean, because I do, uh, I work in mental health too. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. that's my uh, career. So yeah. that was definitely like one of the first things I learned, you know, okay, mm -hmm. you know, you can give, you know, give the compliment first, or let's talk about something positive, And then mm -hmm. you talk about, you know, what the issue is, and then you end. Yeah. And this something, as a matter of fact, I, did, I saw some clients yesterday. And I was thinking about it. And I always start with the positive. Okay, tell me something good that happened this week. Mm -hmm. And now, and now tell me what the things you struggle with. Let's discuss that, you know. Yeah. So it, it, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think if you if you've been on the other side of the desk as an author and you have received edits, you know how demotivating it can be if it's all just every comment is something negative, something mm -hmm. that needs more work. So um I always put positive comments in there as well um, mm -hmm. so that the author also knows, hey, it's not like I hated your book. I'm just mm -hmm. there to make it even better. Mm -hmm. And this is what you already do do very well. Mm -hmm. And this is what needs a little bit more work. Yeah. Well, you talk about writers having imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. That I, I like that you brought that up because even though you've written like, my God, hundreds of books, I know it's not hundreds of books, do you still at this point do you read your reviews do you you know keep track do you like oh i wonder or are you the type of person like if the first couple of reviews come out and they're favorable that makes okay i'm done you know whatever so what what do you do after you know a book is released i read every review on goodreads on amazon wherever i can find them um 
uh, I mean, you work so long on a book, like half a year or sometimes mm -hmm. even longer, mm -hmm. and and you work in total isolation. I mean, I have beta readers, of course, um, mm -hmm. who give me feedback. I have editors, but after so long, and then you're waiting eagerly for any kind of feedback. You want to know, like, mm -hmm. have I really achieved with this novel what I set out to achieve, mm -hmm. and and how are readers reacting to it? Um, so I read it. I read the one or two star, not that I get a lot of them, but I read everything. Um, mm -hmm. Also, because I think as a writer, you always have to strive to to become better, mm -hmm. to agree, perfect yeah. your writing skills. I have published 21 novels and I still want to learn new things. I want to improve my writing because that's what I owe my readers, you know. Um, mm -hmm. They're paying money for my books and so they should get quality books and not just you know, something that is okay-ish. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I read my reviews and if there's anything that I think, oh yeah, they are right about that, then I try to incorporate it into my next book or my future novels. Um, if there's any critique that I think I, I actually write, I this is something that I haven't considered and I should keep it in mm -hmm. mind for future mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. Now you say critique. Now, I like the critiques as well, you know, where they say, I wish there was more of this, or, you know, it would have been better, you know, blah, blah. Let's go past the critiques to the crackpots. Mm. I'm sure you, just like everybody else, get the crackpot reviews where you're just like, what? Yeah. What? I mean, it, it can get pretty hurtful. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of authors stay away from reviews for that very reason, because um, I stay away from good reads. I, I do yeah. my best to stay away from good reads. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I think readers have a right to their opinion. They um, do. But some, some opinions are not really opinions. They are like, oh, they are borderline personal attacks. Um, yes. This year, this year I've um, come across a forum where people are saying like, oh, they learned to stay away from my books because I'm too queer. And I'm like, huh? Yeah. That, What's that, that mean? Like, um, because not all of my characters are gold star lesbians. I have bisexual characters. I have pansexual char characters. I have an asexual character. Well, yeah. And, yeah. Oh, because they, yeah. That, yeah. That's my reality. Like, I identify as a lesbian, but it, if I look around in my circle mm. of friends, I have straight friends. I have lesbian friends. Yes. I have, queer friends, I have pan friends. I have... Yes everything you know yes um, okay I do I do know what you mean with that I mean I've had the same flag when I first when I first did blurred lines it never occurred to me that there was going to be a problem with no, the bisexual main character it was just like yes. oh I love this character you know she's great you know so what she's bisexual I mean mm -hmm. you know and it was just like afterwards you know mm -hmm. when most a lot of the feedback was good, but there were some that were just like, you know, I was just like, oh, I just didn't know that it was an yeah. issue. And you know, yeah. me being the obstinate person that I am, I was just like, okay, so since it's such a problem, I may just have a bisexual character in all my books, you know. So mm -hmm. it's kind yeah. of worked out that way, you know. I, it's not very intentional, but it's kind of worked out that way. But um, it, I find, I just find that disturbing. I, I just, I just really do. I, I don't, yeah. I don't understand it. Maybe that's why I find it disturbing because I don't discriminate when it comes to reading. If it's a good story and I like the characters, I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. care. I mean, you yeah. know, so. Yeah, yeah, just to make it clear, it's not that in my books, it's all about women loving women. It's not that any of them are within my books in a relationship with anyone else. Um, I know, I read your books, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'm like, wow, how, I, I never, it never occurred to me either that that might be a problem, but I, I guess I will, it was a little naive to me because I know there's, there's biphobia and panphobia and transphobia mm -hmm. within, within our community too, but mm -hmm. it just didn't occur to me that people would feel like they have to stay away from my books because they are too queer. Like that's something that I hear from straight people, you know, that yeah, I, this sounds like huh? it never occurred to me that wow, it just left me speechless and it it kind of hit me really hard this year when I when I found people saying that. And yeah, it's 
Yeah. So it's, yeah, re reviews can be. Yeah. So even after 21 books, it can still kind of sting. It, it, and it does. Yeah. I, I think um, my skin is a little thicker, mm -hmm. you know, and I find humor in a lot of the reviews and I find that it helps me. I mean, you know, so it's just like, you know, even if they're like just tearing things apart, I mean, and like you say, some reviews are just more of, they go past the book, Yeah, you know? Definitely. So it's those that, that kind of like dig in and get underneath your skin. It's not yeah. so much the, I liked, I really liked the book, but this was missing for me. I mean, those, mm -hmm. you know, okay. I get what you're saying. I understand. It's the ones that just kind of, I mean, I was, there was one, I think it was my third book. I had a, a, a butch character, you know, mm -hmm. and I read one review that had a, a warning that this was butch and film dynamic. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I was like, why, why would there be a warning? I mean, yeah. I don't understand. I mean, it's not like I'm not, I don't dabble in, uh, uh, you know, um, s &M or anything like that. I don't do anything, you know, where there's a dominating character, you know, and a submissive, mm -hmm. you know, I don't do any stuff like that. You know, I can see how that would be like, okay, this contains, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. If you have to put labels and stuff, you know, but I was just like, you know, just because there's a butch character doesn't mean that character is controlling or, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So it's, it's, I just, it's, it's very disturbing sometimes, but it's like, it, it's really helped that I can find humor in in a lot of them you know so i'm just like okay yeah. it stings but it doesn't sting as badly as it did before definitely yeah yeah, yeah. i think you know like it's most of my books have like a an average of like 4.5 or even mm -hmm. more stars mm -hmm. so the, the vast majority is very positive mm -hmm. i have such loyal readers fantastic readers mm -hmm. who are just great and and who like that diversity in my books um mm -hmm. But I think it's the nature of us writers that that one negative review, that is what sticks in our minds yes. and not the, the hundred positive reviews that, that are also there. So Yes, yes. It was weird. Yes. In, in fact, um, I had a, a reader call me racist. And I was just, I was so confused. I was so confused. Um, Races as in some of the language that I use, uh, the way two companions were talking to each other, mm -hmm. you know, and I was just like, really? Wow. And it, that's something that just, that's something that sticks with that. And another reviewer who, who told me they figured they were able to pull together that I was black from the mm -hmm. way I write mm -hmm. because I use curse words that yeah. those two out of every review that I have ever gotten, I think were the most hurtful because I'm just like, I'm, you know, how can you tell I'm black because I have a couple, you know, some F-bombs, you know, I'm not the only one that includes that. I mean, come on. So it, it, yeah. it was very hurtful. And I think she meant, well, I mm -hmm. really do, but it just, I was just like, wow, wow, mm -hmm. really? And the the one the one who said I was racist, she was just like, you know, okay, if if it was a white person who called her friend black boy or something like that, they would consider that racist. And I was like, maybe, but we're talking about how two people talk to each other. Mm -hmm. and how they've been friends for years. So whatever moniker or pet name they use is between them, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, it was like, and those were the most heart hurtful things I have ever gotten. And it's, I can almost remember those reviews <laughs> word for word. I mean, because it was just like, what? I mean, you know what, seriously? So, but uh, I guess, it's, it makes me feel a little better. I mean, you know, that even after 21 books, you, you're still, because I'm just like, okay, I'm working on seven, on number seven now, and I've gotten better by not being so devastated, you know, by them, but they still, you know, my wife is like, 
that bothered you. I know it did. I was like, well, yeah, yeah but you know, I'm able to, you know, kind of just, you know, push yeah. it to the side or whatever. But you know, if you, if it wouldn't bother you, I think it's time to find another job or another hobby because I mean, mm -hmm. if you stop caring, um, mm -hmm. that's, I mean, it's good to have a thicker skin. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't let it bother me too much. Um, so it's not like it ruin, ruins my whole day. Mm -hmm. um, but if it wouldn't bother me at all, mm -hmm. that would be strange because that, I mean, that, yeah, yeah. I put my entire heart in my writing and a lot of time and a lot of effort. And then if if people leave comments like that, it wouldn't bother me. That would just be strange. Yeah, it, it would be like you were just a factory spitting something out. Mm -hmm, exactly. I mean, I consider each book I write my baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I've never given birth. But I mean, you know, I'm just like, you know, to me, I consider it my baby. Now I, I listen to the editors, you know, I listen to my beta readers, you know, and everything. So, and that's a process in itself. Uh, like my last book, it was maybe 82,000 words. And by the end of it, it was down to 75, mm -hmm. you know, and I was just like, oh, you know, at first when they were like, oh, you know, this is erroneous material right here. We can cut it out. You know, at first I was just like, oh man, but I really like those sections. But when I went back and read it, you know, with a, a you know, less discerning eye, I was just like, okay, you don't miss it. So, so writers listen to your editors. A lot of times they are right. You know, it's, it hurts sometimes when you have to get rid of, you know, passages and stuff that you think really work for you. But, mm -hmm. uh, most of the, you know, I would say 95% of the time they, they know what they're doing I'm, and, and they're right. I mean, because, you know, so I have a, a writer friend who just finished a novel. So she's thinking about who she's going to submit it to. Mm -hmm. And she's very bullheaded, very, and I was like, you have to be prepared. If if any publishing, uh, you know, house picks up your book, you have to be prepared for the edits. You know, yeah. it's not a direct dig toward you by any means, but you have to be open to, them, you know, because they know what they're doing. They're not just going to, you know, try to do something to commercialize, you know, your book yeah. or whatever. They know what they're doing. Yeah. So, so, but yeah, so that, that makes me feel a little better that after 21 <laughs> books, you know, you're still kind of, oh. Uh. So speaking of 21 books, uh, you do have a work in progress. So I always have one. <laughs> yes, yes. It, as a matter of fact, stop. Are you the type of person that works on more than one book at a time? No. Thank you. I don't understand how people are able to do that. Me neither. Like I get so deeply into these characters Me that too. it would feel like cheating. I, not cheating, but then I couldn't go as deep with these ones. You know, like um, I prefer to to focus on I mean I might already know my next book or you might have an idea about what you're gonna have do. one yeah. book in the in the proofreading stage and already doing research for the mm -hmm. next um mm -hmm. but I, I would I couldn't work on the actual writing part of two books at the same time yeah but again it's whatever works best for you I, I know yeah. some people where they're like they get stuck on one book then they switch to the other they have two or three things in the works. I mean, yeah. I'm just like, why? And I mm -hmm. and I was telling, uh, I was talking to uh, somebody recently. We recorded, and she was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." McGee Matthews. She was like, "Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I always, you know, I write for a living." She's like, "So I'm able to have my hands in a lot of pies." And I was just like, "Why? Well, I cannot do that." It's like I'm so concentrated in those group of characters yeah. that it just yeah it consumed no. me. I mean, so I don't know yeah. how we'll be able. I mean, you know, but like you said, whatever works for whatever author. Yeah, yeah. I, I write for a living too, but I still couldn't do it. Uh, I would rather finish one and then. Yes, exactly, this. exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's get back to your work in progress. I know you can't talk a lot about it, but give us just a little mm -hmm. hint. Yeah. Uh, the working title, it might remain that title or change, is uh, Chemistry Lessons. And it's about a chemistry teacher and um, her best friend. So it's a best friends to lovers novel. Oh, I love those. OK, that's one of my favorite tropes. OK, yeah. Um, I haven't written one yet. So I thought, OK, this might be interesting okay. because um, 
as you said in my introduction, I'm well known for my slow burn novels. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what's more slow burn than a friends to lovers? I mean, that's like exactly, a yeah. 20 years slow burn novels, you know, um, because they kind of grew up with each other and they, yeah, they suddenly see each other in a, in a new light. Um, the, the core idea is that all of their friends, half of them think they are a couple already, and um, the other half thinks they should be a couple. And so their friends oh. talk them into, okay. like, okay, go out on one date, you know, like. And see what happens. You never yeah. know. No harm, no foul, you know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I like that. This, that sounds mm -hmm. very interesting. Okay. Yeah. It, does it take place? Where does it, what's the setting? Where does it take place? Uh, in Portland, because I'm going to tie it in with um, Wrong Number, um, Right Woman. Mm, okay. I, I like to kind of tie my novels I know you did. together and, and, and take ca uh, characters from a past novel and, and bring them back in as supporting mm -hmm. characters because I, I figure uh, I, I like to have complete characters with whole lives and, mm -hmm. and they have friends and I mean most of us have other queer friends um, mm -hmm. and so I figure why not introduce them as people who are friends with each other you know mm -hmm. it makes sense yeah, it, yeah. It, especially if they live in the same city I mean you know it, it definitely makes sense you yeah. know so okay okay speaking of um you said something about research earlier do you do all your own research oh yeah really I, I yeah everything it the research is is half of the fun and also how I come up with a lot of um, plot ideas mm -hmm. um the research is, is really fun I'm I'm like a information chunky. I, I really like learning new stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And oh my God, with all the research I've done, uh, like I have one book, uh, The Roommate Arrangement, where mm -hmm. I learned a lot about comedians, stand-up comedians, and mm -hmm. how to write comedy. And my God, how do you research something like that though? Um, oh, first of all, I always try to talk to people who are actually doing mm -hmm. what I'm writing about. Um, like Right now, I'm I'm finding out more about how is it to teach high school in mm -hmm. the U.S. because I mean the school system in Germany is very different. Yeah, um, yeah that's a whole another ball game, especially yeah. high school. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. I mean there are, of course, some some commonalities, but there's also a lot of difference. Um, yeah. So, and I've I've had a novel where I um, researched heart diseases and. Um, how to be an emergency uh, doctor and I learned so much like my my general knowledge increased I'm not an expert in any of these things but I know more than the average person mm -hmm. uh, because my my research uh, leads me in so many interesting um, fields jobs settings um, hobbies uh, in my past book um, wrong number right woman one of them is a craft person and 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 Ooh, does okay. all kinds of crafts. And so yeah. I, I tried it out, all out myself and it was kind of fun, yeah. Was it really? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, okay, yeah. so let me ask you this. Oh my God, and the question just went out of my head. I hate it when that happens. It's a product of getting older. It, it really and truly is. And it was, it was just right there. And watch it come back to me after we stop recording. Okay, well, moving on then. Um, Oh my God, is, is that, that's driving me crazy. Okay, let's get to the, talk about, we always try to do, um, an author ha tells a nice little story here at the end. So do you have anything you would like to share with the uh, viewers? Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is related to when I, when I saw your choice of um, hot sauces, um, uh -huh. I thought, okay, clearly she thinks Germans are very wimpy, are better, like when it when it comes to spice, of course, <laughs> which is kind of true. Um, uh -huh. The German cuisine is not exactly known for being very adventurous when it comes to the spice level. Uh -huh. uh, I always say like Germans have like three spices, pepper, salt, and maggi. Oh my God. <laughs> which is like a seasoning sauce that is completely boring to me. Um, really? What's in it? It's... I, I looked it up because I knew you would ask that. It's a fermented uh, wheat protein. Really? And to me, it just tastes like a lot of salt, and I'm not a fan of salt. Um, mm -hmm. Like German, the German cuisine, uh, for especially for me as a, as a vegetarian, is kind of boring. Mm -hmm. um, 
I like pretty much like all other cuisines better than the German one. Oh. Um, like Indian or, or oh, Bengali yeah. food or, yeah, me too. Um, that's, that's a lot better. Um, but so my story has to do with, with heat level. A um, uh, couple years ago, I visited friends in Berlin and they took me to one of their favorite um, restaurants, a Thai restaurant. Oh. Um, and uh, the food was beautifully garnished, you know. Um, and they had one of these, I, I don't know the name, these red Thai peppers, you know, these tiny yes, ones? Yes, I know what you're talking about, and yeah. the tinier they are, the spicier they mm -hmm, are. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're not meant to be eaten. Mm -hmm. They are just meant as a garnish. You take them off before you eat it. Mm -hmm. um, in the US, I bet they wouldn't even be on the plate. They do. They, they include them. Mm -hmm. they, include they do? Yeah. I always thought like they probably wouldn't because the owner would be afraid that someone would sue them. Mm -hmm. I actually eat them. I, I like the. Uh, but I, I bet you wouldn't have eaten that because that was um, wow. I accidentally, because I was so deep in conversation, uh -huh. ate that. And let me tell you, that was one of the most. I like spicy food. I, this is like not super spicy. Uh -huh. That was painful. Was my it? eyes were, tears were running down my face. My nose was dripping. I felt like my head is exploding. I couldn't breathe. I felt like I'm having a heart attack. It was painful. Wow. Really painful. And I'm, and I'm heroically trying not to <laughs> worry my friends. You know, they were like, oh my God, what, what's <laughs> going on? It was so awful. Um, that was really, and then they're like, you're not supposed to eat that. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I know. Uh, thanks for letting me know that. So was it like the the the, the highest heat level? That yeah, they you're not supposed to eat that. Um, it, it's like something that you always take off. It's just that a little bit of the taste gets into the food. Uh -huh. It's used uh -huh. to cook it. It's not a thing you would eat. Um, oh, wow. Wow. Because yeah, I, I love Thai food. And there's a place too. not... Yeah, it's like one of my favorite uh, things, you know, um, uh, vegetable pad thai with, you know, oh, yeah. throw some tofu in there too. And it's like, oh my God, it's the best thing. But I always get like the highest heat level because I, I like, I like the flavor profile, but I like the heat mm -hmm. as well. So if it's, if I'm not at the end or somewhere in the middle going, I mean, you know, if, if it's, if I'm doing that, you know, it's yeah. hot. I mean, you know, yeah. So, but yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I was fine with like, um, we had Ethiopian food and really spicy that they they made it extra spicy. Like we were the only white people in the place and they were like, mm, okay, let's <laughs> make it extra spicy. I was fine with that, but that was wow. more like bodily assault than anything I would recommend to eat. It wow. was, yeah, I've only had one hot sauce do that to me where I was like in pain, actual pain. And yeah. it was one that Megan O'Brien sent me. And it was hot, you know, when I tasted it. And it was just like, okay. And it took a while for everything to cool off in there. Uh, but it was like 30 minutes later, I started getting stomach cramps. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were debilitating stomach cramps. Yeah. Like somebody was just tying my stomach up in knots. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, what is going on? It was, it was crazy. So I learned from that point on, I'm going to have an antacid before I do any hot sauce tasting so it mm -hmm. can cover that whole thing. But man, and I was out with my wife. We were, we were shopping for something. And I was like in a store, just kind of like doubled over. She was like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, I don't know. She was like, I'm giving birth or something. <laughs> so I had to go sit in the car to recover. It was, I was sweating mm -hmm. and everything. So it was just like, oh my God, it was crazy. Yeah. I remember what I was going to ask you now. I knew it was going to come. Would you, with everything that's going on with the pandemic, would that be a plot, like a something you would write about, maybe? Maybe when it's over. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like right now... It's too tender. My writing is like an escape. Mm -hmm. I, it was very strange being a writer this year. First of all, it was a blessing. Mm -hmm. Because working as a psychologist, I worked a lot with groups. Um, and uh, not with the most sensible people. Um, so probably I would have contracted co Corona by now. Um, mm. Yeah. 
So I was very glad and very grateful to be able to just stay home and not head out into the craziness that is the world right now. Um, but it was also very strange to, I was writing wrong number, right woman, um, just as we were going into the first lockdown. Wow. And I was writing about my characters were going to Pride Parade, they were um, going to the Rose Festival in Portland, they were um, going to restaurants and, and hugging each other and none of that was happening in the real world. So it was kind of very strange to write that when you're uh -huh. like, they are hugging and kissing and you're like, no, stay apart. That's not six I weeks. know, it's, it's <laughs> weird. It, it's very strange. Very weird. Yeah. And I know it's, you know, for us Americans, it's been a very stressful year politically. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. with everything that was going on and it's still going on, my God. Um, mm -hmm. It's been hard with that. I, myself, I, you know, I had started my seventh book at the beginning of the year. I, you know, I, I had already decided in December, okay, I, I know what, I'm, I know what these characters are going to be like, you know, and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And uh, <clears throat> it was touch and go, you know, for a minute. And um, by the time I think I was really starting to get into it, my mom got sick. So, so yeah, and after she died, I was worried that I was never going to be able, I mean, because I was just like, there was nothing and no creative flow, nothing. So mm -hmm. I feel, you know, even though I'm kind of blocked right now, I have everything in my head. It's just getting it out, you know, but I feel blessed that, you know, it took six months. Yeah. you know, for me to be able to write again, but I, I, I'm blessed that I'm able to, because, you mm -hmm. know, I was just like, I was singing, I was like, she wouldn't, even though she never read my books, she was so proud, you know, mm -hmm. every time, because she was on Facebook, so every time I posted something about my book, she was like, I'm so proud of you, mm -hmm. so I know she wouldn't want me to just, you know, be over, overtaken by grief, and, you know, to stop that, so it was just like, it helped me muster up those creative juices I guess and you know mm -hmm. and it started me back to writing and I was just like wow and, you know and I'll, I'll and I'll, I'll keep telling people by the time I get done I was like I think this is probably going to be the best book I've written to date I mean because mm -hmm. I just feel that way I mean yeah. it's just because after the year I've had after everything that's happened I'm celebrating the fact that I'm able to do something, you know, mm. or, or whatever. So, but yeah, it's, it is kind of weird because I'm still, I was, I'm writing in the middle of COVID. I mean, you know, so, mm -hmm. so I'm with you. I'm like, oh, I mean, how yeah. do you, it's kind of, it's kind of strange. And I'm too far along in this book to even contemplate yeah. putting something like that in there. I, yeah. I mean, you know, so how, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, and I, I was, I remember seeing on Twitter, it was some, I think, uh, it was, I don't remember who it was, but uh, it some romance writer, uh, she said her fans were complaining that she didn't have anything about COVID in hmm. her books. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I wrote this book last year, you know, and I know a lot of fans and a lot of readers don't understand the process, you know, a lot of the times that it takes almost a year mm -hmm. for to be done. I mean, you're maybe right. Or longer you're... if you're with a publisher. Um, yeah. And there's yeah, a long editing different. process. It yeah. might more be like 18 months. Yes, it could be. And because if, if you're with a publisher, there may be other books ahead of you that are going to yeah. be published. You know, mm -hmm. so you may have been done with that book last year. Yep. But, you know, depending on where mm -hmm. it falls in the lineup, you know, yeah. it, it's yeah. a long process, you know, yeah. so, and that's what she was trying to explain to them, you know, that I wrote this book last year, you know, at yeah. the beginning of that, you know, I finished with, at the beginning of last year when yeah. COVID wasn't even a thing, yeah. you know, so, uh, so, so, yeah, but, um, yeah. but yeah, it's, I I guess because everything that happened to my family, I don't think there would ever be a subject that I would cover in a novel. I, I don't mm -hmm. think um, yeah. I could do it. Maybe, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you would be the author, I think, because you're, you're, I guess you could say, 
your writing briefcase is so eclectic and you've written some of everything. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. so I, I would pick you as a, a writer that could handle something like that and do it in a sensitive enough manner. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I can see you doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't rule it out, but right now, like my writing is also my escape, you mm-hmm. know, um, and, and I feel like I've, I've actually asked this question in my Facebook group, like, how it's corona is affecting everyone not just us authors also the writers a lot of them had a reader's block like they couldn't really get into a book because they were so distracted mm-hmm. by i mean i was the same i was constantly checking corona numbers and looking yes and um so readers experience the same you know they are reading books and they're having trouble getting into the book because their minds are just distracted mm-hmm. All reading is an escape to them and they don't want to read about the same thing they are going through in their life. I know, life. I know, I know, yeah. But it's, and that's what made me ask that question though, because uh, that writer was kind of dragged for not including that in there. And, you know, it was just like, huh? I mean, you know, but yeah, I wouldn't want to read about it either. I mean, not mm-hmm. while it was going on. I mean, definitely. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, it's just like, there's true to life and then there's, true to life. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. so I've not been able to read a physical book. I've been doing audio books. That's mm-hmm. why I asked you, you know, is the, is the audio book coming out? So mm-hmm. uh, it's very difficult for me, I think because it's too quiet to uh, sit down and open an actual book or do even do an ebook. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like the narrator, you mm-hmm. know, talking in my ear because it, it sucks me in and I'm not able to think about anything else. Mm-hmm. If I were reading, the outside world comes in. Yeah. So it's, it's easier for me to, because uh, I drive to my office on the weekends and it's almost a two hour drive. So to mm-hmm. me, that's prime time yeah. to put, you know, start an audio book and, mm-hmm. or even at home, I mean, whatever. So audio books have been my escape, you know? Mm-hmm. I didn't even do that for a couple of months. Uh, after my mom died, it was just like nothing. You know, my therapist was the one that suggested, you know, do something. I mean, you know, uh, we know it's depressing and it's okay to be depressed. And, you know, part of depression is not being able or not having the drive to do the things you enjoy, as, as you know. I mean, you know, so uh, she just kind of pushed me into that. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I can do this. I can do the audio book. Mm-hmm. And I, I really think listening to the audio books help kind of shake things loose for me, mm-hmm. you know, so it is really help. Now, to this day, I still can't sit down and read an ebook. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, you know, I'm waiting, you know, like, oh, my God, I wish this person come out with a new audio book, you know, or whatever. So, um, so yeah, that, that has helped, uh, you know, tremendously, I, I think. So, mm-hmm. so definitely, definitely. So I will be on the lookout for the audio book for your book, definitely. So, and- Should be any time, yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be on the lookout, definitely. Uh, but thank you for joining me. I really appreciate you coming on the show. I, you know, I like, this show started out as just me doing hot sauce taste tests, you know, just for entertainment or whatever. And it was Tara Scott who, uh, you know, it's like, oh, why don't you, you know, see if you can get people to come mm-hmm. on, you know, because I think, I want to say she was my very first guest, you know, and I was just like, oh, you know, that's not a bad idea, you know, maybe do a little marketing for that author, you know, I don't have a big audience yet, but it grows, it's it's growing, it grows every mm-hmm. time I put a, a, a video up on YouTube, so, but uh I'm a firm believer that, you know, authors should help each other. I mean, because we're such a small niche that, you know, we need to, I mean, you know, so I'm just like, why not just have people on here to promote their books uh, and viewers can learn a little something new about them because it's an interview type situation, you know? So, and I try not to ask the same old basic questions, you know, that you see like in the chat that we all do for yeah. marketing, you know, on Facebook and stuff. So um, I enjoy doing it, you know, it's, it's yeah, a lot of fun, fun, I think. It's definitely so, something <clears throat> different and, and something refreshing. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm going to keep the hot sauce thing going, right? <laughs> you know, so, and it's like, uh, 
to me, uh, I, I, I've liked the interviews that I've done where the hot sauce has been really hot and the, and the author has been thrown off by it. So it's, it's hilarious. So it's just like, okay, now I'm going to ask you this question and you're going to have to try to pull yourself together to try to answer it. So it, it's been a lot of fun. It, it's, some of them have been hilarious. It's just like, oh my God. So uh, so again, thank you for appearing on the show. I appreciate thank you for it. having me. So, Melissa Braden, if you if you would like to, you know, come on, I wouldn't say no. Uh, I tried to get Lee. She agreed, and then she took it back. Yeah, she's she's not the type to. I know, and camera. we were not gonna do video because I know how she is, mm -hmm. and she was just like, oh, you know, it's like okay, I understand totally. You know, I I gotta give her shit, you know, but I understood totally. So, um, so, okay. So everybody, I'll see you next time um, for a new girl on fire. I have no idea who's going to be my next guest. <laughs> and I'm usually on top of things like that, but I will have a next guest. So it'll be a surprise. So, so there you go. All right. 